Are you struggling to regularly publish research papers? Have you been writing your paper for several months now and it's still nowhere near finished? Or perhaps you have published papers, but you'd like to be able to get them to higher impact, you know, those Scopus Q1 index journals. If that's the case, in this video, I wanna share with you the three essential things that you need to have in place in order to be able to regularly publish papers in those top high impact journals. So let's dive right in. Now you might be wondering, you know, how did I come up with those three essential things that you need. My job is basically helping PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in Scopus Index Journals. That's what we do at Academic English Now. And over the last two years, I've had the pleasure to work with over 400 PhD students and researchers and help them finish their PhD thesis, write research papers. And I've had the pleasure to observe people succeed very, very quickly observe people to struggling and then breaking through that struggle and succeeding and also observing some people who for a very long time could not break through and it kind of fascinated me you know what was going on and why some people are able to succeed faster and what it really takes to be able to regularly publish papers and you know through the clients that I've been getting at Academic English now I also have a very good sense of what unfortunately goes on in the academia with PhD supervisors but then also with uh, you know PIs when you're a postdoc and I have a good sense then of what unfortunately doesn't work and why people come to us for help. So with that said, you know, I want to give you the three essential things that you've got to have in place in order to publish regularly in high impact journals. Now, the first thing that you've got to have is a proven process. The thing that I see time and time again, and I honestly don't understand why PhD supervisors or PIs say it, but it usually goes something like this. You know, you're starting a new research project, maybe a PhD or a new research paper or whatever, and you ask your supervisor for advice, like, how can I accelerate this process? How do I do my literature review faster? How do I write my research paper faster? Some of the questions maybe you have asked your supervisors. And usually the answer you get is like, is very vague and it's something like you know look you're, you're a PhD student you're a postdoc right now you should know how to do this I'm not the one to tell you how to do things but this is really nonsensical it's really stupid because clearly there are processes for things right clearly some people have succeeded at certain activities and therefore you know they have a better process of doing that activity and clearly you know if somebody is a supervisor they have published papers and they have been successful at research so surely they should have processes that they can give to you in order to succeed and just not giving that process sets people up for failure and if not for failure it sets you up for like struggling for a very long time until you figure it out on your own and you figure something out that could have been given to you on a silver platter so that you can just accelerate your progress and by that proven process I don't mean doing the work for you like I, I don't write papers for my clients they do the work themselves however I give them a proven process that has worked not just for me but for hundreds of other researchers and PhD students and it's proven it's gonna work for them as well so that's why some people you know following this process can submit the paper in three four six weeks now I can't get into all the details of that proven process but just to give you an idea of what it would look like and obviously it's gonna be personalized to you know, to you specifically, depending on where you currently are with your research paper writing process, right? But there are clear steps that successful researchers follow in order to publish in a high impact journal. The first one is finding a high impact topic. If you don't have a high impact topic, you're not gonna get into a high impact journal. That's just obvious, but a lot of people just don't get this step right. And obviously there are sub steps and processes to find that topic. Finding a high impact topic isn't magic. There is a process that you need to follow in order to do that. And everybody can follow it. I mean, it's not like it's rocket science. There's a step-by-step -step process for that, right? So that, that's the first thing. Like, then the second thing, you know, a second 
step in that proven process is productivity and time management. A lot of PhD students and researchers just are very bad at managing the time, you know? There are too many things going on. They get distracted, they read too much, they stop writing, you know, the writing is always the last thing on the list, you know? So like you really need to develop focus and a plan and you need to follow certain productivity processes, right? So that's kind of the second bucket. And then the third bucket is actually writing the paper in terms of structure and coherent story and in terms of high impact language for each part of the paper. You need to understand how to do that. And again, there is a proven process for that. It's not like, you know, every researcher just comes up from scratch with a completely new structure for a new paper. I mean, everybody follows the same structure, more or less, right? There's a process for that. And if you have that in place, I mean, writing a paper is really, I mean, I'm not exaggerating, it's a piece of cake because, you know, you, you're following a proven structure and proven language that you can just plug into your topic, right? And then the last sort of step is then, you know, polishing your paper in terms of like proofreading, revising it, and how to do that so you don't have to waste thousands on proofreading services, many of which aren't very good. And then, you know, choosing the right journal, of course, and like formatting the paper and all that to ship the paper and then, you know, answering reviewers' comments and all that. So there's a, there's a process and for each of those steps, there are further steps and processes for that. Like, and if you follow it, you're gonna, first of all, do it much, much faster because you don't have to wonder what, what should I do? Like it's laid out for you day by day. Number two, you're gonna do a much better job, you know, and your, your probability of success rises exponentially because you're following something that is proven to work and it has worked for over 400 other PhD students and researchers, right? So that's, that's the first thing, right? And you know, if your supervisor ever tells you that like, it's not my job to tell you how to do things, I would just call them out because it's a, it's a load of nonsense. It's their job to guide you, not to do it for you, but to show you what needs to be done and perhaps gives you advice on what the best practices are to do this thing, right? So that's the first key, having a proven process. Now, the second key to publishing papers regularly is guidance. And this really comes out of the, of the second big problem that I see a lot of PhD students and, and postdocs and researchers face, you know, and probably the main reason why they come to us at Academic English Now for our help is that, you know, that they're not able to see the supervisor in like months sometimes, you know, or weeks at best, you know, and that, that's a problem. It's, it's a huge problem. And we see it time and time again, you know, where you might get to see your supervisor once a month, maybe once every three months, you know, for half an hour, maybe an hour. And that's, that's basically it. But that's not enough to give somebody guidance, right? Now, to, to, to illustrate how this should actually work, that supervision, you know, what we do on our programs at Academic English Now is that, you know, we meet the PhD students and, and researchers, we would meet you at least twice a week, even three times a week to answer any questions and challenges that you have. And on top of that, you know, we give you guidance on a, on a daily basis, 24 seven, Monday to Friday, through our private community. So basically like whenever you have a question, let's say you can't attend one of the, one of the weekly calls, where you can just post a question to us and we'll answer it straight away. What does this do? Well, it accelerates the process because you know, what happens when people kind of can't get guidance is that they try on their own and inevitably make a ton of mistakes. They'll be trying and trying and trying and making lots of mistakes. And then after like two months, they'll see the supervisor and the supervisor will say like, do you know what? Everything that you've done is not very good. I would start here rather than where you started. So just like throw it away right? So you've just wasted two months of your work. But if you can meet somebody three times a week and then ask them questions, you know, five, five times a week, then you can pick the mistakes straight away, you know, and get back on the right track. So that regular guidance and mentorship is crucial. And this regularity of guidance and mentorship brings me to my third key that is super, super important. But before I get that, you know, if you're kind of listening to this and you're like, 
yeah, I'd like to get this sort of proven process. I'd like to get this sort of regular guidance so that I can publish papers regularly. Then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. The link is right below this video. We're gonna get on a one-to-one -one call with you, identify the challenges you're facing, clear the goals, and then give you a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. Now, with that said, the third key is what I call feedback flywheel. What does that mean? You know, typically what happens again is that supervisors like to see a finished product, meaning, you know, you'll be writing whatever text you're writing, let's say you're writing a research paper, you'll be writing it for weeks on your own, and then you're gonna give it to your supervisor, and then the supervisor will just completely destroy it. And you'll be like, what the hell has just happened, right? So you've, you've kind of, again, you've wasted like weeks of time writing it in a completely wrong way, just to have your paper destroyed. This to me doesn't make any sense whatsoever because during those six weeks, what should happen is that you, know, you get feedback at least once a week, but preferably twice a week on short chunks of text that you're writing. You know, let's say you finish like half of the introduction to your paper, you submit it for feedback, you get feedback in two, three days, and that feedback shows you exactly what the problems are, right? And how to fix them so that you can fix them immediately and those problems are not repeated in the following parts of the paper. So that by following this feedback flywheel, what's gonna happen is that at the end of those six weeks, your paper is finished. It's almost ready to submit because you've got feedback during those six weeks, at least six, but probably more like 10 times right so the finished product is already really really good and what this does as well is that you know it prevents all those mistakes that you're making from becoming really ingrained because if you're doing something wrong for weeks and weeks and weeks it's going to be become really ingrained in your mind and it's going to be really difficult to get rid of that problem but if we can nip the problem in the bud right after two days and then give you kind of ongoing feedback for days and weeks to come, it's very likely that like that problem is not gonna repeat throughout the whole paper, you know? Because usually, unfortunately, what I see when clients come to us for help is that, you know, they'll say like, look, it's not gonna take much work, Marek. Honestly, my paper is finished, you know? I just kind of need a little bit of help with the structure and stuff like this. I'm like, okay, let me take a look at it. And 99% of the time, I promise you that like what is handed in is really, really bad. And it's not the researchers or the PhD students fault at all. It's just that they've been writing a paper for the last weeks or even months sometimes with almost no feedback from the supervisor. So they just like, it's all been trial and error and YouTube videos like this. So what would have been so much more effective is to come at the very beginning of the writing process and get weekly feedback combined with the proven process and guidance so that at the end you have a finished product that you can submit to a high impact journal and on that note as well the feedback that you get it should be specific and it should also show you exactly what needs to be corrected and how to do this so very often um, the feedback that you get is vague so You'll, you'll have a paragraph and the feedback will be, this paragraph is illogical, make it more logical. And I'm like, how am I supposed to do that, right? And again, it's kind of the same like with the proven process. I'm not going to write the paragraph for you, right? But in order for feedback to be effective, you need to know what specifically the problem with the paragraph is. Saying it's illogical doesn't give you anything. You have to be more specific. For example, the first sentence doesn't summarize the main idea. Um, and then, you know, you're not going from general to specific, you're starting with a specific example, you have to go general to specific, right? So pointing out the exact problem, and then number two, also pointing out the exact solution, what needs to happen for that paragraph to be really good, right? So if at the moment you're struggling to write research papers and publish them in high impact journals, what you need to do is, is have these three things in place, a proven process, regular guidance and mentorship, and number three, the feedback flywheel. If you don't have these things in place, no wonder you're struggling. And you know, I, I feel you totally, you know, because a lot of PhD students and researchers are exactly in the same position. But if you want to accelerate that process and if you want to have these three things in place for you every single 
week so that you know you're taken step by step from a to z until you finish your research paper then definitely schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team as i said we're going to identify the exact challenges um, that you're struggling with the goals that you want to achieve and then we'll outline a plan for you that will show you how you can get to those goals faster and the link is right below this video